Hello, my internet friend. I'm back. I didn't upload last week, but it is now week seven of job search. I still don't really know what I want to do, like as the end goal in the future. Like, do I want to do full time data science or do I want to do a combination of supply chain and data science? That is still unknown. I figured if I just sit on this question of what I want to do in the future, this like very big, vague question, I may never know the answer. So I decided to take some small steps and kind of, you know, just try it out and mess around and see what happens. So I've taken actions in two different areas, if you will. The first area is in the last episode, I mentioned that it may be helpful. It may be helpful. That may, that's a very big maybe if I go back to school for computer science or data science. I know there are a lot of programs out there, including like Berkeley, Georgia Tech, uh, UPenn, but given I just dropped 80K two years ago on my MBA, I don't want to go for a very expensive education. So the one in Berkeley is kind of out of the question for me at the moment. I am trying to apply for the Georgia Tech master's program. Given my undergrad was in STEM, but it wasn't directly computer science related, I would need to take some unofficial prerequisites. I'm planning on doing that at a community college and that should start up soon. So that's kind of like the first area that I've taken small actions towards. The second area is I've started to apply for jobs that are a combination of supply chain, my domain expertise, and data science. And I've applied to maybe a dozen jobs in that kind of area now. And I had an interview with a hiring manager on Monday, this Wednesday. Haven't heard back, but I felt pretty good about it. But that doesn't really mean anything because I felt pretty good about my last interview too. And we all know how that turned out. So yeah, nothing major has happened because I can't answer my own big question of what I want to do when I grow up. I'm trying to kind of iterate through my uh, little versions of myself here and see what happens. I don't know the right answer. I'm just, you know, sort of fucking around and finding out. <laughs> I spent the study sessions this morning basically applying to more jobs that are a combination of supply chain and data science. I've noticed that this job application process is just so time consuming. In the last three hours, I was only able to send out three applications. That was not a lot at all. I was just looking on my job tracker. I have now applied to a total of 91 jobs. Didn't hear back from 52 of them. Got rejected from 37 of them. And I'm currently in the pipeline for only two of the jobs. My current rate of getting into the pipeline for any jobs is 2.2%. <laughs> Not great at all. I'm saying it like while laughing. Honestly, and it's just not funny at all. But what are you going to do about it? You know? 
if we break this down further of the 71 jobs that I applied to eight of them was a combination of data science and supply chain both the roles that I'm currently in the pipeline for are supply chain related jobs for strictly data science roles <laughs> I've applied to 83 jobs and nothing in the pipeline currently. And I didn't hear back 46 times, got rejected 37 times. So clearly it's working better for me when I apply for jobs that are a combination of data science and supply chain, which, you know, makes perfect sense because I do have seven years of experience of domain knowledge in supply chain. I think it just goes to show that how much experience weighs when you are applying to a new job in a new company. I'm starting to realize how delusional I was at the beginning of this process trying to apply for product data science jobs with a very little product data science experience. Back then in my mind, I was like, you know, I've worked on projects. I have some related experience at my job. I can do the work that a product data science does. Why not me? Well, this makes sense because based on my data and my current experience, my job experience is weighed a lot more heavily than coursework, than my project work. Maybe doing a little side step and doing supply chain and data science together is smart move. I was gonna get ready to make some dinner and then I realized I don't really have food at home. <laughs> so my Trader Joe's Instead of going to the gym, this parking lot is so hectic. I can only imagine how hectic it is in Trader Joe's if the parking lot is this crazy. It is a Wednesday. Why, why are we all going to Trader Joe's on a Wednesday? Okay, how do I want to cook this salmon? Ooh, I got the hot sauce from Hot Ones a while ago and to get a free shipping i also got hot honey so maybe i'll do honey garlic soy except with hot honey that's gonna be delicious okay we need soy sauce well this is the hot honey i was talking about i had it with my cottage cheese toast the other day it wasn't that spicy but it was good I think one of the reasons why I don't really enjoy cooking is that one, I'm not very good at it. Two, is the texture of raw meat is, is kind of interesting. I keep on having to rinse my hands whenever I cook. I don't really have to cut this. I won't cut my hand. I'm actually gonna cut <laughs> Nobody's injured in the process. Human or cats. Untie cutting gloves. This dinner is just absolutely gorgeous. That first sip feeling. <laughs> the screen means I just microwaved. Oh, there. That's good. I don't taste the hot honey in it at all, but it's really good. Okay, before I call it a night tonight, 
let's let's have a heart to heart. Earlier I was talking about how like I'm doing little things to kind of figure out where it takes me. One thing is to try to get back into a master's program and the other is trying to find a job that's a combination of supply chain and data science. I don't know if I give off the vibe of I'm so confident, I don't have anxiety at all, I've got this. I don't know if I give off that vibe. I certainly don't feel that way. <laughs> I've talked before a couple times about like having almost like a fight with myself every week on, oh, this is so hard. Do I go on? Do I not go on? The same thing still happens. I don't think this whole brain, like thinking and maybe even thinking too much is a me problem. I came to realize that in my opinion, that job searching is an inherently demoralizing process. You always have more losses than wins. Always. I mean, unless you are, I don't know, Eleanor Roosevelt or Michelle Obama or, or something like that. Us as normal people, or me as a normal person, I have way more losses than when, like, my success rate so far is 2 point some percent. It is part of the struggle, it's part of the experience, I'm trying to embrace it, but who wants to embrace it? It's not fun. I wish this wasn't part of the process. There has to be a better hiring process than this, right? Like, everybody thinks looking for a job sucks like I have friends that are also at the same time as I am looking for a job and it's fun for nobody anywho I don't know where I was going with that I guess the conclusion is I don't know what I'm doing I'm trying to figure it out by fucking around and in the process I am not having a lot of fun but it needs to be done anyway I know at the end it will be worth it. It's just that this, this hole in the middle part sucks. And I just realized that I can't like do this. I can't raise four fingers without also ra raising the fifth. Like if I try to do just three, that's as far as it goes. You know, I, I post on YouTube kind of to show my process and how sucky it is in hopes that it gives you some confidence or just the feeling of being seen or felt, right? I've gotten a couple of comments now asking me, am I afraid of my future employer seeing my videos and whether that's going to negatively impact my job prospects? and whether I'm afraid of my current employer seeing these videos. And the answer to both of those questions is yes. Yes, I am very afraid that either my current employer or my future employers will think negatively of me because of these videos. But at the same time, the worst thing that could happen because of the video is that I don't get a job or I'm fired. <laughs> and the best thing that could happen is, you know, it doesn't impact my life at all. But at the same time, I help somebody out there to make them feel like that they're not alone. And I'm also not just doing this for like altruistic purposes, right? It's a two way street. I get so many comments in my videos like encouraging me, telling me that they are going through the same thing, that it sucks, that is quite an experience to be had. And when I see those comments, though I don't always respond to it, I feel less alone too. So it's a two-way street. I try to help others in the process. I get feedback and that feedback makes me feel better of this whole experience. 
So I think this whole process, this two-way beneficial relationship is worth the worst outcome, which is me being fired or me not finding a new job. So I also just want to put that out there. If the worst happens, it happens. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't just delete all of my videos at this point. I've, I accept the risk and I decide to move forward with it.